Well, we're off down to the boatyard this morning. It is only late September, but I don't think we'll have much chance in the next few weeks to go sailing. So it's time for Morning Vicar to be put back on her trailer and hauled out of the water. It's completely calm, still and tranquil this morning. No wind, bright sunshine and absolutely no hint of autumn yet. Now Galton might be halfway up the River Dart, but it's not quite as sheltered as many people think. The prevailing winds are southwesterly, and there is a good mile of fetch in that direction towards Ditson. Basically, any weather with a bit of west and south in it has plenty of time to whip up the water in the river, and occasionally give us some surprisingly rough conditions. Like this southwesterly storm a few years ago. Whilst it's not been quite that bad recently, there was a bit, there was a bit of a blow last week, and there are signs that uh, Vic has been bouncing around. pontoon fender has lost a couple of its straps and is halfway off uh, falling into the water. Uh, some of the lines have lost their anti-chafing rubber tubing and the cockpit seems to be half full of the record rainfall that we've had in Devon this week. Casting off for the shortest journey of the year, just across the creek to the slipway. It almost seems a shame to break the smooth, glassy surface of the water this morning. It's about an hour before high tide, and we're on neeps again. The slipway jetty is quite busy, darts, sailability are there, as well as a couple of other small boats, uh, taking the opportunity of the nice weather this weekend to take the boats off the water at the end of the season. There's lots of talk about the terrible weather we've had all summer and how consequently the river hasn't been as busy as it usually is. But I think this year we've sailed more than usual. With the weather being so unpredictable we seem to have taken every opportunity we can to sail between the fronts coming in. Well, I'm quite happy with the amount of sailing we've done. Time to go and find the trailer. Thankfully it's where I left it at the start of summer but I haven't actually been up to check. It's also time to fit my detachable tow bar, the one that I forgot to do before I filled the boot up full of stuff. Now the slipway at Gallantum is really shallow and it's only really available a couple of hours either side of high tide. And because it is so shallow, I can't get the trailer in deep enough without using an extension. 
I've always meant to buy an extension bar for the trailer, but never actually got round to it. So what I do is detach it, drop the trailer into the water to about the right depth, put the brakes on, and then use a towing strap to avoid getting my car wet. Then it's just a matter of floating the boat up to the rear keel rollers and winching it on. The whole thing would be quite a bit easier if I put the trailer in a little bit further but I don't have a longer extension strap. About two thirds of the way on, it needs a foot on the trailer to stop the hitch from rising, but she's soon balanced again. Now you may have noticed that the towing strap was already on the trailer when I picked it up. That's because that's where I left it in my enthusiasm to go sailing in spring. It's been there all summer, in the sun. So with hindsight, what happened next was not so surprising. It's supposed to have a five ton braking strain, but not after you've left it in the sun all summer. You're okay. It's taken the strain okay. Now plan B was to use some good old fashioned towing rope. I only needed to get it the last few meters up the slipway so that, so that I can hitch it onto the car. Now plan C would have been to get one of the guys from the boatyard in the Land Rover to come and pull it out. And plan D was just to wait until the tide went out so I could get the car down onto the trailer. But that might have precipitated some not... interesting conversations with the other slipway users this morning. OK, stop. Practice makes perfect.
The first thing to do after the trailer wheels have been immersed in seawater is to flush out the brakes with fresh water. Uh, the trailer is fitted with a hose connector on the wheel arch that takes fresh water down pipes fed directly into the inside of each hub, uh, flushing the seawater and the brakes and the bearings. I leave that running for a while as we take a closer look at the growth on the bottom. Looks like an entire ecosystem has started to develop whilst we're on the mooring in Brixham. It then obviously died when sunk into the mud at Campton. Um, it's not surprising I thought we were going slow. Somewhere in the middle of all of that mess is my poor paddle wheel log. Actually, it all comes up quite easily with some gentle attention with an outboard oar. And in no time at all, she's a lawful lot um, And I'm ready for hosing down. Just need to pop her back into a slot in the yard, take off the soft furnishings and some of the paraphernalia and put the cover on. There is a chance that I could be down in the next couple of weeks to get a couple of more sailing trips in before the weather turns even worse. Uh, so I'll leave the sails on to the engine for now. Once again, Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Goodbye.